trying to quit smoking. And a guy told me, he's just talking about hypnotic. It made me remember. He's like, you got to try hypnosis, man. He goes, I did that. And uh, now I don't smoke no more, you know. Guy whisper in my ear, you know. And then that's it. I don't smoke. I don't, don't want to smoke anymore. So I'm like, uh, uh, well, I don't know if I, I, don't know if I want to do that because, uh, you know, because some people are susceptible to hypnosis and some people aren't. And I'd hope that I am not. You know what I mean? <laughs> that if a fucking guy whispered in my fucking ear, you know, because I've seen it on the TV. Guy whisper in the ear, lady's a fucking duck. <laughs> so I don't want to be one of those people, you know. So, I, you know, smoking's bad for you, but on the other hand, I don't want to be going like, man, I quit smoking. It's the best thing in the world. Man, I don't smoke. I don't even want to smoke. Uh, the bad news is, I turns out I have no free will. Just whatever a fucking guy whispers in my ear. If he tells me to blow a guy, I'll fucking blow a guy. I don't, I don't want to blow a guy, but he told me to. Um, but I think I'm getting better at communicating now um, with all kinds of people. For instance, the other day I accidentally cut a guy off in traffic, and um, he yelled at me, uh, learn how to drive, you stupid bitch. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, like I had to think fast. I'm like, what could I say to this guy that would make him embarrassed for that behavior? <laughs> and so I just yelled, I'm a man. <laughs> you shouldn't assume, you know. <laughs> Gets me thinking. Um, I'm 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 getting older. I'm 27. I'm not that old, but like R. Kelly wouldn't be interested in me. Which, like, <laughs> like thank God, but like get the door closed. And <laughs> I'm just so irritated by how much easier it is aging for men versus women. Like I've even heard people say that men get more attractive as they get older, which is like bullshit. Right? <laughs> so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait till I'm like 60. And then I'm going to switch over. <laughs> Gender's a spectrum, and like, maybe then it won't be like, oh, you look tired. It'll be like, have you been writing a book? <laughs> you look distinguished. Um, so I work a lot. Um, which is what I say to people I never want to see. Um, <laughs> you know, I, um, I used to work in an office and I hated it, but I, I, I couldn't quit because it takes so long to train people to not expect much from you. And I just, I didn't want to have to like start over somewhere else. Like I didn't want to like make that decision. So my work was really nice and, and they made it for me. And, <laughs> but it's great. Like I found my like dream job afterwards and I'm gonna apply to it next week. And I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling really good about it. Um, I do have a problem with procrastination, um, but I've been trying to get better. I've bought a lot of self-help books a lot of books about like starting things now and like I'm sure I'll get to them. Um, <laughs> but my favorite self-help book is the Marie Kondo's Magical Art of Tidying Up book. Has anyone read this book? Oh my God. Okay, so my favorite part in that book is when she says to hold each one of your possessions in your hand and if it doesn't bring you joy, get rid of it. Right, so I don't have that book anymore. <laughs> Torrance Hill, I'm standing before you as living proof that the secret does not work. <laughs> oh, if you're laughing at that, that means you wasted $23.95 like I did. If you're not familiar with the secret, I'm going to tell you because it's built into my 12 minutes. Okay, the secret is this belief, this philosophy, fuck it, it's a cult, right? And they believe that whatever you say, write, think goes out into the universe in wavelengths carried out by dolphin and platypuses. <laughs> to God or Jesus, whoever's on duty. <laughs> and then they send back what you want to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what happened in my life, but apparently my dolphin and platypussy were having some issues. 
because I didn't get a single thing on my list, which was really fucked up because I only wanted three things. I wanted a downtown loft, a Lexus, and good health. The universe sent me a studio apartment in Koreatown, <laughs> a Toyota Camry, and a urinary tract infection. I know what you're thinking, ooh, Koreatown. Uh. Yeah, I wanna take more risks in life. Not crazy risks, you know, I'm not gonna skydive or take a carnival cruise, you know what I mean? I just wanna, I wanna like try new restaurants, those kind of risks. There's a Korean restaurant in my neighborhood. You got, you got a minute? And I've been going by this place for the last six years and I never tried it. And, and uh, two weeks ago I thought to myself, screw it, I'm gonna try it, I'm a risk taker. And guess what? Horrible, horrible food, those Koreans. <laughs> Koreans have a horrible food. I think it's a nail salon during the day or something, I don't know. <laughs> Talk about risk, you, you, you read about this guy last year, he broke the record for skydiving, free falling, he went up to the Earth's atmosphere, 24 miles, and he free fell for almost 24 miles. He had the helmet, he made the suit, he filmed himself. And this guy was going fast too. He was going faster than the speed of sound. He broke the sound barrier, this guy. It's a good thing his parachute opened up, otherwise that would have been a big mess to clean up. They would have finished cleaning him up, then they would have heard, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, I started working out in the gym, I tore my Achilles heel playing basketball. Yeah, fucked up. First of all, I'm in my 40s, so it's over. You understand? Like y'all 15, so it don't matter. <laughs> you can tear your Achilles heel, you can walk it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> you just tie it together with some string and keep playing. Not me, I was, I was, I, first of all, let me tell you something, I was on crutches for three months. If you find yourself incapacitated, you make sure you get somebody around you that give a damn, you hear me? Because when I tell you my wife didn't give a fuck about me, <laughs> I knew I had to call my mother to come help me on day two. When I said, hey babe, you think I can get some water? She went, oh! <laughs> I said, uh, bitch, I got 88 days to go. Now I start working out at the gym, which I never do. I never work out at the gym. I started doing that. Because I was going to work out at home with them little workout videos. See them little videos they got, you know. It's too much. It's too much. The work, uh, uh, the warm up is 11 minutes. <laughs> They're like, all right, we about to start. I'm like, no, you about to start. <laughs> I'm about to shut it down. You understand? <laughs> we going to do 85 push ups. No, we not. There's no reason. I'm never going to do 85. I'm never going to do 10. None. Two at the most, one down to see if my keys went under the car, one back up when it didn't. That's it. <laughs> These little workout DVDs is too much. You've seen the name of them, Asylum, Insanity. First of all, relax. I don't need no prison body, you understand? I don't need to be in enough shape to fight off a shower rape. I don't need that. <laughs> I need enough strength to make some oatmeal for my daughters in the morning, that's it. My workout video need to be called, Do What You Feel. That's what I need, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't drink. I'm actually sober. Thank you. Wow. Haven't had a drink in a while, and that's because when I drank, I made odd choices. <laughs> Especially on dates. <laughs> so everything's different now that I don't drink. I don't have sex. Because <laughs> apparently when I'm sober, I'm picky. <laughs> All these years, I thought I was a big old whore. Turns out I'm shy. <laughs> <laughs> nice to get to know the new me. <laughs> it's always kind of an awkward conversation, though, to tell the guy that I'd been sleeping. You know, it's like, hey, listen, John, I can't see anymore. I quit drinking. <laughs> yeah, I thought we had chemistry. Apparently, the chemical was vodka. <laughs> Can you still help me move? No? OK, cool, cool. So I'm in this 12-step program and I have a sponsor and I was telling her about my sexual history and she goes, uh-uh, listen, Lisa, you need to do a fourth step sex inventory. I know, and I was like, what, what's that? And she goes, I want you to make a list of all the guys you've slept with, write down their names, we're gonna go over it next week. <laughs> and I was like, their names? <laughs> What am I, a mind reader? <laughs> I did what anybody who needs self-help does. I wrote a self-help book. Because I've read every self-help book. I've read from uh, You Are the Champion to You Are Badass to Who Moved My Cheese. And 
And then I read Soap Opera Digest, but it, it was just right there near, and I needed to catch up on General Hospital. But I have a book. It's coming out in the fall. It will help anybody in any situation. It can help you. It can help you. It can help you. My book is simply called That Shit Ain't Gonna Happen. <laughs> Let me explain how it works, because it's tricky. <laughs> Anybody trying to lose weight? Yes. That shit ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Anybody trying to give up smoking? Yes. Oh, that shit ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Anybody here single trying to find a meaningful relationship? Okay, you don't want to point yourself out, but you need to get my advanced book called Bitch Please. <laughs> that shit ain't going to happen. I did lose a lot of weight last year. I was on Weight Watchers November of last year, and on Weight Watchers, I lost like 25 pounds. Hey, no, it's all back, bitch. Forget the wow. <laughs> and I'm trying to put it, I'm trying to, I gotta get back on the bandwagon again. Weight Watchers, great company. Oprah was right, it's wonderful, but it's very strict. Gotta go to a meeting every week for what? To verify that I'm fat? I have mirrors at home, Kathy, I don't know why. A lot of accountability, you gotta go to a meeting and there's a weekly weigh-in, you're weighed in every week. And the weigh-in is always at these weight loss centers where the fucking windows are right there and all the cars pull up and they can see you get on the scale. And then the weight loss leader lady yells out your scale or your number in front of the whole goddamn room. But then they get mad at me if I want to get butt naked at the weigh-in. <laughs> when you're at home, are you wearing a black dress and denim jacket and fake lashes? No. If you don't want to see a big naked brown bitch in the front window, put a scale in the back. Otherwise, areolas coming out, everything off. I gotta be down point two by tomorrow, bitch. Let's go, come on! Privacy is how we do it at home. And I lost a lot of weight in the first two weeks. First two weeks, when you decide you really want to do it and you don't cheat, the weight just falls off. So in the first week, I was down like three pounds in two days, but I, I, I was an asshole. I thought I was J-Lo. I'm looking on Amazon for a bodysuit. I'm like, bitch, you are not different. You look exactly the same. <laughs> but you know how ladies, it's all in your head. It's all like two pounds. You can barely see me. What the fuck? I ain't wasting away. I lost 30 pounds last summer. <laughs> and uh, what spurred that is I was at karaoke one night. And after I finished my song, some guy walked up to me and he was like, hey man, you're like the fat Marvin Gaye. <laughs> and I was like, couldn't you have said the white Marvin Gaye? <laughs> and he was like, no, you're more fat than white. <laughs> So I lost the weight. Uh, it was hard because I like food. Uh, like I like food more than I like sex. I think food is better than sex. And I could prove it to you. Food is better than sex because some people add food to spice up their sex life. But no one adds sex to spice up their food. No one's like, hey, you know what would go great with these wings? 